Hey, I've got to tell you about this crazy thing that happened to me last weekend. I was out kayaking in the Everglades in Florida. You know, that massive swamp with all the gators and stuff. It was a typical sunny day, and I was there for some peace, maybe spot some wildlife. Little did I know, I was about to see something way beyond your usual gator. So, I'm paddling along this narrow channel, right? The water's calm, and I'm just enjoying the solitude. The sounds of nature were all around. Birds. The occasional splash of fish. You know, the usual Everglades soundtrack. I had been on the water for a couple of hours, and I was getting into that zen mode you get when you're just flowing with the rhythm of paddling. Then, as I rounded this bend, I saw something on the bank that caught my eye. At first, I thought it was just a big log. The place is full of them. But as I got closer, this log moved. And not in the way a gator does. It was more deliberate, kind of slow, but sure of itself. I slowed down my kayak, curious, you know? This thing, it was partly in the water, partly on the bank. I was still a good distance away, but I could see it was big. Bigger than any gator known to man. Its skin was this dark, muddy green, and it had these ridges running down its back. But here's the thing that freaked me out. It wasn't shaped like any animal I knew. It was long and sort of twisted, like it was contorted in a weird way. I stopped paddling and just floated there watching it. I couldn't make heads or tails of what I was seeing. Then, this creature, it lifted its head. That's when my heart really started to pound. The head was nothing like a gator's. It was more elongated with a snout, but not like any snout I've seen. And the eyes, man, those eyes were like these glowing amber orbs. They didn't seem natural. The creature didn't seem to notice me at first. It was busy doing something with its front limbs in the mud. Its movements were careful, almost like it was searching for something or maybe burying something. I don't know. But then it stopped and turned its head straight towards me. That's when I realized I might be in a bit of a situation. There I was, in a flimsy kayak, facing this huge unknown thing. I remember thinking, what the heck do I do now? I mean, you can't exactly speed off in a kayak, and I wasn't keen on turning my back to it either. So, we just stared at each other for what felt like ages. It's hard to describe, but I felt like it was sizing me up, wondering what I was doing there. My mind was racing with all sorts of thoughts, like what if it's aggressive, or what if it's just as scared as I am, which would be weird. Just as I was about to slowly back away, this creature, whatever it was, let out this low rumbling sound. It wasn't loud, but it was deep, you know? Felt like it vibrated right through the air. So, there I am, in my kayak, and this thing just made a sound that felt like it went straight through me. I can't even compare it to anything else. It wasn't threatening, but it was powerful, you know? Like it was communicating something. After the sound, the creature's demeanor changed. It was weird, but it seemed calmer, almost curious. It tilted its head slightly, still looking at me. That's when I noticed more details. Its skin wasn't just green. It had these patches of darker and lighter shades, like camouflage. And there were these small, intricate patterns around its eyes and down its neck. It was almost beautiful, in a wild, terrifying sort of way. I realized then that I wasn't just going to paddle away from this. I mean, how often do you come face to face with something like this? So I stayed put, trying to look as non-threatening as possible. We were just there in silence, looking at each other. It's hard to describe, but I felt like there was this understanding between us. Like we were just two creatures, sharing a moment in nature. After a while, the creature started to move again. It was graceful, almost serpent-like as it moved through the water. And then, something incredible happened. It began to emerge from the water, and I saw its full size. This thing was massive, easily the length of two kayaks. It had these powerful, muscular limbs, and its body was more elongated than I first thought. As it moved onto the bank, I saw it wasn't just searching or burying something in the mud. It was making marks, almost like it was drawing. The patterns it made were complex, deliberate. It felt like I was watching some ancient ritual, something primal and untouched by the modern world. I was so engrossed in watching this creature that I barely noticed the sky changing. 
The sun was starting to set, casting this golden light over the swamp. It made the whole scene feel otherworldly. The creature stopped its work and looked back at me, as if acknowledging my presence one last time. Then, as smoothly as it had appeared, it slid back into the water and swam away, leaving me there in awe. The marks it left in the mud were still there, intricate and mysterious. I didn't dare get closer, though. As the light faded, I finally turned my kayak around and started paddling back. But why was it making those marks? Was it some undiscovered species or something else? The rational part of me wanted to find logical explanations. The paddle back was a blur. I was in a state of shock, excitement, disbelief, everything at once. When I finally got back, it was almost dark. I remember just sitting there for a long time, trying to make sense of it all. I mean, how do you even start to process an encounter like that? I had a thousand questions and no answers. The first thing I did was hit the internet. I started searching for anything that could explain what I'd seen, local legends, rare species, anything. I dug through forums, cryptid sites, wildlife databases, you name it, but nothing matched what I saw. It was like this creature didn't exist anywhere but in that swamp. I even checked out some local lore, thinking maybe it was a known legend around the Everglades. But again, nothing. That's when I started reaching out. I contacted local biologists, conservationists, even a few folks who were into cryptozoology. Most of them thought I was pulling their leg. A few were curious, but skeptical. They asked if I had any proof, footprints, photos, anything. But I didn't have anything except my story. One biologist was kind enough to meet with me, though. I told him everything. The size of the creature, the patterns in the mud, the way it moved. He listened, nodding along, but I could tell he was skeptical. He said maybe it was an alligator that was just behaving oddly, or I had misjudged the size. But I knew it wasn't an alligator. This was something else. Then, I remembered the marks it made in the mud. I described them to the biologist, how intricate and deliberate they were. That got his attention. He said it was unusual behavior for any known animal in the Everglades. Animals mark territory, sure, but not like that. He suggested the idea that I go back and see if the marks were still there. I was hesitant at first. Going back meant facing whatever that thing was again. But I needed answers too. So I decided to go back to the same spot, see if I could find any evidence. A couple of days later, I was back in my kayak paddling to where I'd seen the creature. My heart was racing the whole way. Part of me was excited, hoping to see it again. Another part was terrified of what might happen if I did. When I got there, the first thing I looked for were the marks in the mud, and they were there, still visible. They were as intricate as I remembered, maybe even more so now that I was looking at them up close. Then I just waited. I don't know what I was expecting, maybe for the creature to show up again. But the swamp was quiet. No mysterious creatures, no strange sounds, nothing. Just the usual sounds of birds and insects. I stayed there until the sun started to set, then headed back. I met up with the biologist and told him about my return trip, and he was intrigued. I was now able to describe the patterns in more detail, having seen them a second time. But he couldn't identify the patterns. He suggested I send the info to a few other experts he knew. So that's where I'm at now. I've reached out to those people and I'm now waiting to hear back. Part of me hopes they can identify it, put a name to what I saw. Another part of me likes the mystery, the idea that there's still something unknown out there. That's my story. It's not wrapped up with a neat little bow, but that's how these things go sometimes, right? It's been a wild ride and who knows, maybe there's more to come. All right, so let me tell you about this crazy thing that happened to me while I was on patrol. It was a typical night in northern Minnesota, kind of chilly, and the woods were just doing their thing, you know, being all creepy in the dark. My partner Mike and I were just cruising along this back road, keeping an eye out for anything out of the ordinary. That's our job, after all. We're just chatting about some game, I think, when suddenly Mike slams on the brakes. I'm like, man, what the heck? and he just points ahead and his face is all pale. 
I follow his gaze, and there, in the headlights, is this... thing. It's standing right in the middle of the road. At first, I think it's a bear because, well, it's big and it's on all fours. But then, it stands up. I kid you not, it stands up on two legs like a person. It's covered in fur, dark and matted. And it's got these ears, man, like a dog's ears, but way bigger. And its eyes, they're reflecting the light from the car like some kind of animal. So, Mike and I are just staring at this thing, and I can feel my heart pounding in my chest. I mean, what do you even do in a situation like this? We're cops, we're supposed to handle weird stuff. But this? This is out of some horror movie. The creature, or whatever it is, just stares at us for a moment that feels like forever. Then, it does the most human thing. It sort of cocks its head like it's curious or something. That's when I get a good look at its face. It's not a bear, it's not a wolf, it's something else. Its face is too long to be a person's, but it's not quite animal either. It's like a mix, you know? Mike's starting to get out of the vehicle, but I put a hand on his arm. I'm like, wait, just wait. I don't know why I say that. Maybe I'm scared of what might happen if we start a fight. Maybe I'm just too shocked to think straight. Then, as we're sitting there watching it, the creature drops back down on all fours and lopes off into the woods. Just like that. It moves so fast, like it's made for running in the dark. We sit there in the car, neither of us saying anything for a good minute. Finally, Mike's like, did that just happen? I nod, still trying to wrap my head around it. Yeah, I saw it. We decide to get out of the car, very cautiously, and shine our flashlights into the woods where the creature disappeared. There's nothing there now, just trees and darkness. No sign that this creature was ever there. We get back in the car and just sit there for a moment. Should we report this? Mike asks. I shake my head and say what? That we saw a werewolf or something? They'll think we're crazy. So after that, there's this silence in the car. It's heavy, you know, filled with all these unasked questions and what ifs. We're both experienced cops, seen our fair share of strange stuff. But this, this is new territory. We start driving again, but it's different now. Every creak of the car, every little sound from the woods seems amplified. Mike's got this grip on the steering wheel like he's expecting something to jump out any second. I can't blame him. I'm feeling the same way. There's this sense of unease that just won't go away. We're driving slower now, scanning the tree line, half expecting to see those glowing eyes again. But there's nothing, just the normal night sounds, the wind rustling through the trees, the occasional deer darting across the road. It's almost like the whole thing was just our imagination, but we both know it wasn't. Then Mike breaks the silence. You ever hear of anything like this before? I mean, in all your years? I think about it. No, nothing like this. I've heard stories, you know, local legends, but I always figured they were just that. Stories. Mike nods. Yeah, same here. But after tonight, his voice trails off. We keep driving, completing our patrol. But it's like we're just going through the motions. Our minds are still back on that road. With that, creature. Every time we pass the spot, we can't help but slow down, just a bit, looking for any sign of it. Finally, our shift comes to an end. We head back to the station, both of us quieter than usual. As we're signing out, our captain notices our looks. Rough night, he asks. Mike and I exchange a glance. Just the usual stuff, you know, I say. But we both know it's a lie. The truth is still out there in the woods, lurking in the shadows. We part ways agreeing to meet up for coffee before our next shift. I drive home, but I can't shake it. Every shadow seems like it could be hiding something, and every noise makes me jump. I keep telling myself it was just an animal, something explainable. But deep down, I know it's not that simple. That night, I barely sleep. Every little sound has me sitting up, straining to hear anything out of the ordinary. But there's nothing, just the usual night sounds of the neighborhood. Eventually, exhaustion takes over, and I drift off into a restless sleep. The next day, I'm running on fumes. I keep replaying the encounter in my mind, trying to make sense of it. I do some research on anything that might explain what we saw. 
but there's nothing that fits, nothing that feels right. Mike and I meet up for coffee, and it's clear he didn't sleep much either. We talk about the usual stuff, but it's like there's this unspoken agreement to avoid talking about last night. It's too raw, too fresh. So, that's where I'll leave it for now. It's hard to put into words how much that encounter affected us. It's like our whole view of the world shifted in just a few moments. Hey, I've got to tell you about this wild thing that happened to me last week. You're not going to believe it, but I swear it's true. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. So, I'm out on my ranch in Montana, right? It's this sprawling piece of land, surrounded by mountains, forests, and the sky is just this endless expanse above you. I spend most of my days out there with the cattle, fixing fences, that sort of stuff. It's peaceful, usually, but last Thursday was different. It was just after sunrise, and I was heading out to check on the cattle in the north field. I've got this old beat-up truck that rattles and complains every time I start it, but it gets me where I need to go. The air was crisp, kind of chilly, and the sun was just starting to light up the peaks of the mountains. Beautiful, right? But as I'm driving along the dirt road, I see something off. The cattle were all clustered together in the middle of the field, and they seemed spooked. Cows don't usually get like that unless there's a good reason. I park the truck and climb out, thinking maybe there's a coyote or a bear around, something like that. I start walking towards the herd, calling out to them, trying to see what's got them all worked up. And that's when I hear this sound. It's like a low rumble, but it's coming from the sky. I look up, and man, I couldn't believe my eyes. There, above the field, is this massive bird. And I mean massive. Its wings were so wide they could have covered my truck. It was dark, almost black, with these gleaming feathers that caught the light as it moved. It was circling above the field, and every time it flapped its wings, there was this sound like distant thunder. I just stood there staring at it, not sure if I was seeing things or what. Now I've heard stories about the Thunderbird from some of the local tribes. They say it's a powerful spirit, a protector of the land. I always thought those were just legends, you know? But seeing this, this creature up there in the sky, it made me wonder. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. I must have been standing there for a good five minutes just watching it. The cattle were still all huddled together, watching it too. Then, as suddenly as it appeared, the Thunderbird swooped down, close to the field. Its wings spread out, and it was like the whole sky was covered for a moment. The cattle bolted, and I'll admit, I was scared too. I mean, you don't see something like that every day. So, the cattle are running wild. And this gigantic bird is just owning the sky. I've never felt so small in my life. This thing, this thunderbird, it's not just big, it's like something out of a myth. I feel weird now, even saying it all. I remember thinking I should get out of there, you know, hop back in the truck and just floor it. But my feet wouldn't move. It was like my legs were concrete, so I just stood there watching this creature. It was awe-inspiring and terrifying all at once. The wings, man, they must have been at least 20 feet from tip to tip, easy. Each beat was like a gust of wind, and the sound, that deep rumbling sound, it vibrated in my chest. Then, it did something I didn't expect. It started descending, not fast, but in this slow, controlled spiral. It was coming down towards the field, towards me. My heart was pounding so hard I could hear it in my ears. I thought, this is it. This is how I go out, staring down a legend. But it didn't come for me. It landed on the other side of the field, near the tree line. Even on the ground, it was massive, towering. Its talons dug into the earth like it was nothing. I could see its eyes from where I was standing. These piercing, intelligent eyes that seemed to take in everything. I don't know how long we were like that, just staring. It felt like an eternity. The rest of the world just fell away. It was just me and this ancient, majestic creature in a standoff. But it didn't feel threatening. It was more like it was acknowledging me. Like it saw me, really saw me, and was letting me know that I was in its world. Then it took off again. Those massive wings beat once, twice, and it was airborne, soaring back into the sky. 
The power of its takeoff kicked up a cloud of dust and leaves, and I had to shield my eyes. When I looked again, it was just a speck in the distance, disappearing into the mountains. After that, everything was eerily quiet. The cattle were long gone, scattered across the field. I was alone standing there trying to process what had just happened. It was surreal, like something out of a dream. But it was real. I knew it was real. I eventually made my way back to the truck, my legs feeling like jelly. The drive back to the house was a blur. I kept replaying the encounter in my head, over and over. It was overwhelming, humbling, and a little bit scary. I mean, how do you go back to normal after seeing something like that? When I got home, I couldn't stop thinking about it. What did it mean? Why did it show itself to me? And the biggest question of all, would I ever see it again? So that's the story of how I came face to face with a Thunderbird. It's changed the way I look at the world, and it even changed the way I work. I'm not as carefree out there as I once was, that's for sure. It was June 28th when I was standing in front of the old and creepy gates of Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. It felt like I was on some spooky history tour, and I was pretty interested because of the ghost stuff related to it. I'm not usually into ghost stories or crazy rumors, but something about this place just grabbed me. This massive old prison made of stone and iron was sitting empty right in the middle of the city. Even though it wasn't used anymore, the sight of it was still intimidating. I had to take a moment before I could get the courage to open the old rusty gate. I'm somewhat of a history buff, and this place, even though it's quite run down and huge, interested me. It used to be filled with thousands of prisoners, and it holds a part of the dark history of American crime. My footsteps were the only sounds on the old cobblestone streets as I went further into the old prison. The first couple of cell blocks were creepy, like they still held the memories of the people who used to live there. I heard quick, loud footsteps while I was walking past the fourth cell block. Even though it was hot, I got goosebumps. I felt chilled to the bone, and it was like an instinctive alert that gave me a weird feeling at the back of my neck. Maybe it was just the breeze. So, it had rained the other night, which made everything in town, especially the stones, kind of chilly and wet. Also, I kept hearing this weird sound of chains clinking from somewhere far off. Then, I found this old falling apart mess hall. There were all these odd sounds and stuff going on inside, kind of like whispering or soft noises. Honestly, it gave me the creeps. If these walls could talk, I bet they'd have loads of stories. To calm myself down, I figured that sounds are louder in old spaces, especially stone ones. Isn't that part of the fun, though? The creepy feeling was what I was after when I chose to visit this rundown prison. It kept me alert, right? Still, there was a weird feeling that wouldn't leave me alone because of the strange sounds. I kept hearing weird, quiet sounds and felt this creepily cold air, even in what seemed to be empty rooms. It was getting pretty spooky as I hadn't really seen anything odd yet. So, I decided to check out one room. It was pretty tight and damp inside. Then I noticed how loud my breathing sounded against the hard walls. The cell stank as I walked around its tight little space. The air felt heavy, and I realized I couldn't hear the normal prison noises as much. Suddenly, it got really cold when it was just cool a moment ago. When I turned around, I saw this weird figure out of the corner of my eye. It was sort of misty looking in the barely there light, and its shape kept changing, like smoke but its eyes were intense and unblinking. It was really freaky. Honestly, I wasn't prepared for something so intense. I was pretty scared. My heart was pounding hard in my chest. Even though I was terrified, I decided to not chicken out and tried my best to check out this ghost I was seeing. Oddly, the ghost looked like a human. Maybe it was a person who used to live here who was really into history, or just someone whose soul hasn't found peace yet. Honestly, this place feels like it's full of soft voices all trying to get their own story across. It's crazy how fast your view of things can change just like that, especially when you catch a glimpse of bright blue eyes. It had a sort of ghost-like body, but still human shape. The eyes were glowing, either because they reflected light or some sort of ghostly power. 
It scared me so bad I couldn't move. You can't really put the fear into words, but it was more than just raw fear, because I'm a scholar. It was also a lot of curiosity, and a cold feeling of not knowing what on earth was happening. But then, suddenly the fog cleared. All that remained was the cold and the loud beating of my heart. The eyes were the last to go. Their gaze was so intense it felt like a shiver down my spine. The whole thing was weird. It was so quick, yet it felt like forever. Afterwards, everything seemed off, as if something was missing. I walked out of the jail cell, feeling pretty nervous. The whole place was really quiet, and I realized how cold it turned, even though it's June. Being all alone, I started thinking about what just happened. Was it just the wind, some weird sounds, or was it actually something ghostly for the first time? It really creeped me out when I felt like someone else was in the room with me for a bit. The eyes looked so real, and the temperature suddenly dropping was too weird to just brush off. I try to stay skeptical about stuff like this because it's unclear territory, but I can't forget it. The burning eyes, the chilly feel, the whispered words, it stays with me. Eastern State Penitentiary really makes you think about how our rough past still hangs around, sometimes in surprising places. It tells us stories and maybe even looks for understanding. Full of sadness and remorse, this place holds its own tale of terror. It's like countless silent cries from the past are bouncing off the walls, pleading to be remembered. Even though I just visited for a day, it left me with lots to think about. To be honest, I get this creepy feeling that I was being watched. Every time I think about it, it gives me goosebumps. Could it just be my imagination going into overdrive because of the gloomy surroundings? Or was it really some ghost trying to contact me from wherever they are? I guess there will always be things we don't understand about the world, especially when it seems like it's stuck between what's real and what's not. I mean, was this some sort of optical illusion? Or did we really see something supernatural? I don't have an answer, but what I do know is that some experiences or creepy stories really stick with us, becoming a sort of spooky part of our lives. I was on this early morning meditation out in the red rock formations of Sedona, Arizona. It was a peaceful morning red-orange light casting long shadows on the harsh, timeless landscape. Sedona's beauty transcends the visual. There's an energy there that you can almost touch. It's almost, but not quite, beyond words. I've heard about the energy vortices in the region and have always been intrigued by the pull they say you can feel. I'm a true empath and this was like heaven for me. So there I am, parked right in the middle of these breathtaking formations looking for peace and a connection with something bigger than myself. I had settled into this groove right on top of a formation that gave me a panoramic view of the sun coming up. During my meditation, I felt a strong connection to the energy of the place. The morning sounds of desert birds were mixed with the scent of sagebrush. For me, this is all like slipping into a deep contemplation where the world just fades away. That's where I was when these entities showed up. I say the word entities because I don't have a better word for them. At first, I thought I'd slipped a little too far into my own head. The air seemed to ripple, as if disturbed by an unseen force. It started as a soft hum, nearly drowned by the breeze and the whispering desert grass. It was like a low-frequency vibration from the ground beneath me, rhythmic and strangely calming. The earthy aroma I noticed earlier grew stronger. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't unpleasant but it made itself known, more like rotting leaves, damp earth, even a hint of sulfur, as if I were standing right next to a geyser. It felt ancient, as old as the rocks around me. That's when I felt them, these unseen presences around me. Can't tell you exactly what they looked like, because I never saw anything directly, but I could sense them moving, like shadows creeping on the edge of my vision. The feeling wasn't exactly threatening, but it was definitely strange. Not like they were coming closer, but more like they were drifting around me. Like they were just as curious about what I was up to as I was about them. Being out there alone, despite the calm, a thread of unease remained. They had a quietness about them that was comforting, giving me the sense that this encounter wasn't just by chance, 
like we'd made some sort of silent agreement to share the space. I tried to stay focused on my meditation, though it was difficult with the air charged with an almost tangible tension. It seemed like time had stilled, and even the desert quieted as if in anticipation. I turned my thoughts inward, trying to find my center again, feeling the calm returning, and with that calm, a sense of anticipation. Out of nowhere, a soft sensation, feather light grazed my hand. The sensation made me shudder, an involuntary response to the unexpected, and as I opened my eyes, I took in the ambient light around me, which seemed somehow more vibrant, almost alive. As I tried focusing on the apparitions, they stayed just out of my line of sight, but they were there, several of them slender but solid. They seemed to have a form that wasn't bound by normal physics. Their shape reminded me vaguely of how a child might draw a stick figure, stretched out and distorted, apparently four to six feet tall. Their heads were oddly large, kind of how a child might exaggerate in a drawing, which only added to the otherworldliness. I don't believe they had faces, you know, with regular features like noses or mouths or such. Where you'd expect eyes, there were just two dark spots, deep and unnerving. Just as I was coming to terms with their presence, the humming grew stronger, more resonant. A few more moments passed. The vibrations seemed to pulse in time with my own heartbeat. However, there was no spoken language, but there was a communication, an exchange of energy. It didn't feel hostile or friendly, just open. I can't say I wasn't scared because I was. However, my initial fear subsided, replaced by a strange curiosity. I felt the entities were there to observe, maybe gather some information. And then, as quickly as they had appeared, they began to fade away. The humming ceased, and the sharp scent in the air cleared. They didn't just vanish, but their presence grew fainter and fainter until I was alone again, surrounded by nothing but the red rocks. It took me a while, perhaps a few minutes or maybe an hour. Time felt jumbled. But when I finally climbed to my feet, I felt changed, as though that encounter had left its mark on me. I knew I would never be the same again. Ever since that day, I've been drawn back to that red rock formation, as if the rocks themselves are calling me. The place now held a deeper mystique for me. Even though I've never seen the entities again, the site still has a lingering energy that comforts me and somehow it always brings a smile to my face. In the end, all I can say is, whether you believe in aliens or not, whether these entities I felt were real or just fragments of my overactive imagination, this experience was as real to me as the Red Rocks themselves, and I don't think I'll ever quite be able to explain what happened that morning fully, but I will continue to seek those moments where the natural and the supernatural blend seamlessly into each other. Sometimes, just experiencing something speaks more than any attempt at explaining it. So, it was a couple of years back, in the dead heat of August. I'm out in the Tano National Forest in Arizona, and yeah, I know what you're thinking. Who walks alone at night in a forest? But man, it was my thing, you know? The quiet, the stars, the whole night vibe. It was calming. Like, usually you'd have hikers all over. But at night, it was just me. The sounds of the place were louder, felt closer. It was a different world. I started these walks after my life kind of, well, turned upside down. Divorce, job stress, lost my folks, you name it. This was my escape, my little break from all that mess. It was just me out there. No worries. No nothing. Just me in the woods. This one night, I head out after the sun dips down. I've got my flashlight and this itch for some time away from everything. As I'm wandering deeper into the woods, I start spotting constellations up in the sky. They're like this silent, reliable map over me. And man, staring at those stars makes you feel tiny, but in a good way. I keep moving until I hit this spot I like, a clearing with a stream. It's my go-to place to chill. I'm sitting there, eyes shut, just taking it all in, the water, crickets, everything. But then, there's this weird smell, kind of musky, and something else I can't quite place. I figure it's just some rotting wood or something, not a big deal. Suddenly, this warm breeze hits me. 
It's weird for a night in August, right? It felt off. Kind of like something was there with me. I can't explain it, but it was eerie. That's when things get real weird. It's like the forest just goes silent. You know that feeling like something's watching you? Yeah, that hit me hard. I hear something across the stream, so I flick on my flashlight, and there's these two red eyes staring back at me. It freaks me out, man. They're shining through the leaves, and I'm not kidding. They're spooky. And then, whatever it is steps out, and I'm just frozen. This thing, it's tall and looks all kinds of wrong. One moment it's furry, the next it's not. Its face is flipping between human and animal. I'm standing there, flashlight shaking, and this creature just turns and vanishes into the bushes as fast as it showed up. I'm left there and my heart's slamming in my chest, and there's this musky smell still hanging around. Part of me is freaking out, but my legs won't move. And then it comes into my head, skinwalker. That word just jumps into my head out of nowhere, right? It's like one of those things you hear about around a campfire or in those old legends that locals talk about. But when it's just you in the dark and your heart's racing a million miles an hour, those stories feel a little too real, you know? So I'm standing there and every part of my brain is telling me to book it, but my legs are just not getting the memo. It's like they decided, nah, we're good, we'll just stay here where the creepy creature thing might be lurking. Great. Eventually I start walking again, but the forest, man, it's not the same. It's like the vibe's been flipped upside down. There's this thickness in the air, and every sound is dialed up to 11. The breeze doesn't feel refreshing anymore. It feels like whispers, and not the good kind. I keep thinking about the skinwalker. In the stories, they're these creatures, right? They can change shape, look like any person or animal they want. They say they're like the dark side of nature, or magic, or whatever you want to call it. And I'm not saying I believe it, but try telling that to my imagination at that moment. The walk back is brutal. Every little sound has me twitching like I'm some kind of paranoid squirrel. A branch snaps, and I'm ready to run. A shadow moves, and I'm two seconds from a heart attack. It's not just fear. It's the feeling that you've seen something you weren't supposed to, and now you can't unsee it. When I finally see the lights of my house, it's like crossing the finish line at a marathon I never signed up for. Safe at my doorstep, the sun's coming up, and I'm thinking about that walk. It was supposed to be my escape, my little slice of peace. Instead, I've got a memory that's gonna stick like gum on a hot sidewalk. Days go by, and I keep looking back at those woods from my window. I can't help it, it's weird, but it's not just fear I feel. It's respect, maybe even a bit of wonder. That night, it changed something in me. I used to walk into those woods like I owned the place, like it was my personal retreat. Not anymore. Now, I look at those trees, and there's this acknowledgement. It's their world too, maybe even more theirs than mine. And they've got secrets, man, secrets that you might stumble on if you're not careful. I haven't stopped my walks, but they're different now. I'm more alert, more aware. I stick to the paths more, and I keep my eyes on the stars less. I listen more too, not just to the sounds, but to the silence as well. There's a rhythm to the forest, and that night taught me to respect it, to really listen to it. So, yeah, that's the story. Make of it what you will. Maybe it was just a bear, or my eyes playing tricks on me. But maybe, just maybe, it was something more. Something from those old tales that are too true to tell. Either way, I'll never look at a night walk the same way again. I'm writing in to share this insane thing that happened to me while I was driving through New Jersey. It was late, maybe around 11 p.m., and I was on this lonely stretch of road cutting through the Pine Barrens. It's this huge forested area in South Jersey. You know, the kind of place where you could get lost for days. Anyway, I was just trying to get to my motel in Atlantic City, but GPS was acting all wonky, kept rerouting me in circles. It was weird, but I figured it was just some glitch. The road was super dark, only my headlights cutting through the black. Trees lined the road in a way that was super creepy. It was quiet too, too quiet. Usually you hear crickets or something, right? But not then. 
I had the radio off because I was trying to concentrate on the directions, and that silence was just eerie. So I'm driving, and out of nowhere, there's this figure by the side of the road. At first, I thought it was a deer. We've got tons of them in Jersey. But as I got closer, I realized it was no deer. This thing was standing on two legs, not four. It was pretty tall, maybe around six feet, but hunched over. Its skin looked leathery, almost like bat wings stretched over bones. And the head, that's what freaked me out the most. It had these glowing red eyes and these horns or antlers jutting out from its head. My heart was racing and all I could think was, no way, this can't be real. I slowed down the car, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. And then this creature, it turns and looks straight at me. Those eyes, they were like burning coals. It felt like it was staring right into me. I'm not gonna lie, I was scared out of my mind. All those stories about the Jersey Devil I'd heard as a kid came flooding back. I thought about stopping, rolling down the window, getting a better look, but something in my gut told me that was a bad idea. You hear those stories about people encountering weird stuff and how it goes bad? Yeah, I wasn't about to be that guy. So I hit the gas, not caring about the GPS anymore. I just wanted to get out of there. I kept looking in the rearview mirror, half expecting that thing to be chasing after me, but it didn't. It just stood there, watching as I drove off. For the next few miles, I was a mess. My hands were shaking on the wheel, and I kept telling myself it was just some prank, and my mind was spinning with a million thoughts. That thing I saw, it wasn't human, and it definitely wasn't something that should even be alive. The road seemed to stretch on forever, and the forest was not ending. Every shadow seemed alive, and every little noise made me jump. I was on edge, expecting that thing to leap out at any moment. I slowed down a bit, trying to calm myself. The last thing I needed was to crash in the middle of nowhere. My eyes were darting around, scanning the trees, the road, everywhere. That's when I saw it again. This time, I watched as it came out of the trees and into the middle of the road, just standing there, looking at me. I slammed the brakes, hard in my throat. The car skidded to a stop, and there we were, just staring at each other. This time, I got a clearer look at it. It was even more terrifying up close. Its skin was this sickly gray color, stretched tight over its bones. It had these long, twisted arms that ended in what looked like claws. And its face, I'll never forget that face. It wasn't just the red eyes or the horns. It had this snarl, like it was angry or hungry. Then it did something that freaked me out even more. It tilted its head, almost like it was curious. I swear, for a second it seemed more human, or like it was trying to figure me out. Was I about to become another weird tale people told around here? I remembered my phone, thought about trying to call for help, but I knew the reception was spotty at best in these parts. Then, it stepped off the road, melting into the shadows. I sat there, unsure if it was safe to move. After what felt like an eternity, I slowly started driving again, constantly checking the mirrors, half expecting it to reappear. The rest of the drive was a blur. I don't even remember how I got to the motel. When I finally did, I locked myself in my room, not daring to look out the window. I couldn't sleep, couldn't even close my eyes without seeing that creature's face. I know it sounds crazy, and part of me still can't believe it happened, but it did, and I can't shake the feeling that it was more than just a random encounter. Like, maybe it was trying to tell me something, or warn me, I don't know. The next morning I had half a mind to go back and look for it in the daylight. But another part of me was terrified of what I might find. So, there you have it. My encounter with what I think was the Jersey Devil.